kids, I'm Deaconess Kim, and I want to welcome you to Virtual Team Jesus Sunday School. We are starting a new Kingdom Quest adventure today called Aliens in a Strange Land. Now I'm guessing when you hear the word alien, you think of strange creatures from other planets. There are a lot of movies and TV shows about aliens. Now, the Bible doesn't say that there are aliens on other planets. Aliens like we see on TV or in movies are not real. But today, we're using our imaginations. So let's pretend for a moment that you came here from another planet and you're seeing everything for the first time. How do you think you would feel? Do you think you would fit in? What do you think you would say? One thing we can be certain of an alien wouldn't feel like he or she fit in very well. Have you ever felt like you didn't fit in very well with a certain group? I know I have, and sometimes it makes us feel lonely. Surprisingly, we are going to find in the Bible today that there are aliens right here on Earth. But I think it will surprise you to learn who the aliens are. We'll discover that in today's Bible event from the book of Daniel, and we will learn no matter what, trust in God. Are you ready to explore these stories of aliens in a strange land? Let's see if Judy is here so we can get started. Hey Judy, are you ready? Oh yeah, I'm so ready. Judy, my goodness, what is all of that about? Isn't it obvious? I'm an alientologist. A what? An alientologist. What's that? I'm an expert in aliens. Well, how did you end up being an expert in aliens, Judy? I hang around strange creatures long enough, and then I think I'm an expert in them. There's my brother Gordy, of course, and I hang around you quite a bit, don't I? Hey, now, Judy, I don't know if that really qualifies you to be an expert in aliens. Oh, but I do know about aliens. I've seen all the alien movies from E.T. to Chewbacca, Star Trek, and Alien Invaders. I know all about aliens. Well, I'm glad you do, because today we're going to see an alien right here. What? No way. Yes way. And even better than that, we're going to read about aliens in the Bible. No way. They don't have space aliens in the Bible, or I would have found out by now. Well, there aren't little green men from outer space in the Bible, but they did have aliens. You see, the word alien actually means foreigner or visitor from another land. You mean like how some people think aliens come from outer space and visit our planet here on Earth? Right. So you see, Aliens can also be people who come from, other, from another country. They're called aliens or foreigners. Oh, I get it. So where they are in the Bible? Well, in the Bible, we find out that Daniel, his friends, and many of God's people were captured and taken to another land. It was a foreign land called Babylon. How did that happen? Well, remember all of those bad kings of Judah? God said he would punish the people if they kept following bad kings and false idols. And eventually he did. He let the king of Babylon defeat Judah. Many of the people were captured and taken to the land of Babylon. So they were all aliens there. You mean like foreigners? That's right. It wasn't their home because their home was back in the promised land of Judah. So what happened when they became aliens? Well, let's watch this Bible event. We'll put it on the alien view screen and you can watch these aliens. Afterwards, we'll meet an alien right here on Kingdom Quest. Way cool. Let's go. Our Bible event is from Daniel chapters 1 and 2. God had warned his people that unless they turned back to him, he would allow the Babylonians to defeat them and take them away. But the people ignored God's warnings, and during King Jehoiakim's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and attacked it. The Babylonians surrounded the city of Jerusalem. A young man named Daniel and three of his friends were trapped in the city. The Lord allowed the Babylonians to win, they took sacred objects from the temple of God back to Babylon. They also gathered many of the people and took them away in chains. Among those taken to Babylon were Daniel and his friends. 
Daniel and the other prisoners were marched all the way to Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar ordered his chief of staff to choose the very best of the young men. They had to be strong, healthy, and clever. Among those he chose were Daniel and his friends. These four young Jewish men were to be trained for three years. They would also be given food from the king's own kitchens. But Daniel knew that the meat being offered was not prepared in a way that honored God. So Daniel asked for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. But the chief of staff refused. The king has ordered that you eat this food. If you become pale and thin, I will be in trouble. But Daniel did not give in. He spoke again, saying, Test us for ten days on a diet of vegetables, then compare us to the others. So for ten days, Daniel and his friends were fed vegetables, while the others ate the king's food. At the end of the ten days, Daniel and his friends looked healthier than the rest, so they were allowed to continue on their diet. God gave the four young men special talents and understanding. At the end of their training, they were presented to King Nebuchadnezzar. No one impressed the king as much as Daniel and his friends. So they entered the royal service. The king found them ten times more capable than any of his wise men. Time passed. One night, King Nebuchadnezzar had such a disturbing dream that he couldn't sleep. He called his wise men, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. They replied, tell us the dream, and we'll tell you what it means. No, replied the king. You must tell me what I dreamt, and then tell me the meaning. They replied, no one except the gods can tell you your dream. The king was furious, and he ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be killed. When Daniel heard about this, he went to see the king and he asked for more time to discover what the king had dreamt and what it meant. Daniel went home, and that night God revealed the secret to Daniel in a vision, and he gave praise to God. Daniel went in to see the king and said, Don't kill the wise men. I will tell you the meaning of the dream. Daniel told the king, There are no wise men who can reveal the king's secret, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. Now I will tell you your dream and what it means. In your dream, you saw a huge statue of a man made out of different things, like gold, silver, iron, and clay. As you watched, a rock came and struck the statue, smashing it to pieces. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. Daniel then went on to explain the dream. Your majesty, you are the head of gold. God has made you the ruler over all the inhabited world. The other parts of the statue are other kingdoms which will come later. The rock that crushed the statue is another kingdom that God will set up. It will never be destroyed or conquered. King Nebuchadnezzar threw himself down before Daniel. Truly, your God is the greatest of gods, the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries. For you have been able to reveal the secret. Daniel was given power over the whole province of Babylon. Daniel trusted God, and God saved him and his friends. So, Judy, what did you think about Daniel and his three friends? Well, that was cool and everything, but I wanted to see aliens. I know, you were excited to meet an alien. And I do have a special guest coming today. Do you want to meet him? Really? Yes, who is it? Well, it's a friend who will help us understand a little more about what it means to be an alien in a strange land. Oh, I can't wait! First, though, let's give our offering to God. All right, here's my offering. I'll give it to God. I want to help other people learn about Jesus. That's great, Judy. Now, why don't you wait here, and I'll go see if our friend is ready to talk. Okay. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Finally, I get to see a real live alien. I wonder where he is. I wonder what he looks like. Greetings. Wow, a real live alien. I've never seen an alien before. I'm Judy. What's your name? I am called Gar. I am pleased to meet you. But I think you have seen aliens. I was watching the, what is it called? Bibble story pictures? You mean the Bible event? But there weren't any aliens in that story, were there? Daniel and his friends and the other people were all normal humans. Daniel and his friends were the aliens. They were strangers in a foreign land. Oh yeah, I guess they were. So I guess that makes them aliens. 
but I guess I always thought aliens did weird stuff. To the people of Babylon, Daniel and his friends did do weird things. For example, didn't they refuse to eat the king's special food, even though it was the best food around? Yeah, that was strange. But if there was tasty food in front of me, I'd want to eat it up right away. But I guess maybe that food was something God told them not to eat. Hmm. I do not know. What other unusual things did Daniel do as an alien in this strange land? Well, didn't he do something about the king's dream? I mean, no one else could interpret the dream. Yes, I think so too. Tell me, is it normal for humans to understand dreams like that? Even when the king wouldn't even tell anyone what the dream was? Definitely not. But Daniel couldn't do, could do it because God gave him the power. He trusted God, and because of that, Daniel and his friends were saved. This Daniel and his friends were certainly strange, especially to the people of Babylon. I guess they really were. Thanks, Gar. Jake asked Kim, did you know that Daniel is an alien? Well, yes, in a way he was. Aliens are foreigners in a place that isn't their home, and Daniel and his friends were a long way from their home in Jerusalem. Yeah, and I'll bet the other people thought that they were pretty strange. I mean, who says no thank you when the king sends you barbecue? Well, what's more important is they learned this truth. No matter what, trust God. They followed God, even if it meant going against what everyone else was doing. They trusted that God, that it would work out best, and it did. But what does this mean for us, Deaconess Kim? Well, do you remember what Daniel said at the end of the king's dream? Daniel talked about a kingdom that would someday come and it would have no end, and all the kingdoms of the world could not stand up against it. Do you know whose kingdom that is? The United States? No, it's God's kingdom. When God sent Jesus into the world, he destroyed the power of Satan's kingdom. God makes us citizens of his kingdom when we believe in Jesus as our savior. It means we don't even really belong to this world anymore. Wait a minute. You think I don't belong to this world? Not if you follow Jesus. Let me ask you a few questions. Boys and girls at home, you can answer too. First, do you believe in Jesus and want to follow him? I sure do. Do you know that there are lots of people in the world who don't care about God or want to follow him? Yeah, I guess there are. Do you want to go along with them or do you want to follow God? Well, it's way better to follow God and his ways, isn't it? Well, then you are an alien, a foreigner in this world. Your real home is heaven. You're part of God's kingdom. So in a way, you're an alien here. Will you read this Bible verse with me? Dear friends, since you are aliens and strangers in the world, I'm encouraging you to keep away from the sinful desires of the world. These desires constantly attack you. Live such good lives among non-believers that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see you do good things and praise God on the day he visits us. So Judy, are you an alien in this world? Well, I thought I was an alien expert, but maybe really an alien because I'm a follower of Jesus. You've got it. When we follow Jesus, we are foreigners in this world because the world doesn't follow God. So if we follow Jesus, we are aliens living in this strange land. Today, let's pray that we would trust God no matter what, like Daniel did. Pray that we do our best to follow Jesus in this world. Will you please pray for that for us, Judy? Sure. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus so that we can be part of your world and your kingdom. I guess that makes us aliens when we're around people that don't want to follow you. So help us, no matter what, to trust you like Daniel and his friends did. Help us also to tell others about you so they can trust in you also. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, there you have it. Like Daniel and his friends, we are all aliens in a strange land. Next week, we'll learn more about them. 
And believe me, the next story is on fire. Until then, have a great time. Have a great week. And remember that Jesus loves you always.